All right, well, my name is Aiden Moyers, and today I'll be presenting the work of the Kovar Group on microscale, uh, micro cold spray of patterned thick films and microscale devices. There are a lot of students in this group. That would be me, Stephen Beershank, Aditya Goyal, Scott Burleson, Derek Davies, and Jeremiah McAllister, many of which are in the audience. And our four faculty, we have Michael Gamage, John Keto, Michael Becker, and Dr. Kovar. So for this presentation, we'll start with the overview of what our objectives for this process are, what its capabilities are, how the process actually works, the frontiers we're trying to research currently, and conclusions we can draw from it. So the objectives are that we want to additively manufacture thick film devices, which are roughly two and a half dimensions, so it's an X and a Y, and then a Z that has microscale uh, thickness. So we want to be able to directly write metals and other ceramics at room temperature and without post-processing. This will let us be compatible with many kinds of ceramics and other uh, substrates because we don't have high process temperatures. We want to be able to tune properties of the final film and the microscale device by turning processing knobs. So the capabilities are a process. Uh, the top row is all silver onto various materials. So on the left, it's a small RF antenna of silver written onto a hard ceramic. And in the middle, on the top, we see an SEM line of silver onto a stub. And this shows the typical uh, cross-section of a film, which is going to be roughly Gaussian distribution that you can raster along an axis to produce a film and along two axes to produce a thick film. So we can actually do really fine feature resolutions using masks. So the image on the uh, far right is a silver written through a mask. And then after we remove the mask, we can have microscale features. So in the bottom, we have uh, ceramics deposit on things. So it is an alumina line uh, in the bottom left, written across ABS plastic, stainless steel, and alumina with one set of conditions. So this shows we have a pretty versatile process that can deposit ceramics onto a wide variety of substrates. In the middle, we see silicon carbide uh, deposited onto a washer. So this is silicon carbide, a very hard ceramic used for abrasives and various coatings, uh, deposited onto a soft galvanized coating. So you can imagine there's a lot of process disparity there for kind of properties you can get. And on the right, you see lithium niobate, a technical ceramic with some interesting electrical and optical properties written onto silicon. So there's a lot of capabilities that we can do. The actual process starts with taking a micro or nano powder, aerosolizing it, breaking up any agglomerates, going from snowflakes to snowballs to hopefully individual grains of uh, water ice. Then we accelerate the particles through uh, an aerosol uh, nozzle, and we impact them into a substrate at high velocity. So from uh, the left two items here uh, are engineering considerations. The right two items are currently mostly simulations and the areas that are active research. So one of the items is to actually figure out what the particles do in the nozzle. To predict the particle velocities, we perform aerodynamic simulations by taking our whole system and then simulating its geometry and how the air flows through it with varying considerations. And this allows us to put a particle inside of the gas stream and then figure out uh, where it hits the substrate and at what velocity. And we have found that generally, velocity is one of the most important uh, impact characteristics to predicting what actually happens in our process. When it comes to actually figuring out what happens in impact, the particle impacts happen on such small length scales, nanometers or micrometers, at kilometers per second, perhaps. And so these strain rates are too high to actually capture on a camera. So there's no high speed that can really allow you to get that resolution in both space and time. So what we do is we actually simulate them atom by atom in the scale model through a process called molecular dynamics. And so here are two results. One of these on the left is a silicon carbide particle hitting a silicon carbide substrate. And what we can see is that it's impacting at an angle and the angle actually prevents it from adhering well. And so on the right, in contrast, we see uh, yttria impacting yttria at a much lower velocity, but it does adhere. And so what we use molecular dynamics for is predicting what kind of regime we actually see adhesion and the deformation behaviors that we wanna to use to get our final film properties. And so <laughs> the final frontier of our process is working on physical experiments, studying the property, uh, the process property relationships. And so this is going into one of the other really big areas of our field beyond just the velocity of impact but the actual particles that we're depositing. So from the x-axis on all three of these plots is the same, it is the temperature at which we pre-treat our nanopowder. And so this little image right here shows a very loose snowflake agglomerate. And as we increase the heat treatment temperature, the size of the agglomerate drops as it densifies first, and then it actually increases again as multiple agglomerates come together. And so the result is that we're going from snowflakes to snowballs, and then maybe even just ice. And so what this actually does is it changes how our powders actually behave in the gas. So it changes what speed they're impacting the substrate and also changes how they impact the substrate. So we can see in this middle plot, 
as the treatment temperature goes up, which changes the agglomerate morphologies, we actually increase the relative density. So as the heat treatment of the pre-processing changes, we actually get a different relative density of our final result. So we can actually tune between porous films and dense ones. And this has a final impact on our desired property. In this case, this was a silver film. So starting with silver nanoparticles and densifying them into larger agglomerates, what we actually see is that the, the original denser films with higher pretreatment temperatures uh, result in a more dense film and in turn a higher conductivity film. The conclusions we can come to are that microcold spray can be used to produce patterns of and metal films at room temperature. And these work out of a variety of input processes and output substrates, so it's quite versatile. The film microstructure is a function of particle size and of impact velocity, and our current work focuses on depositing multiple materials to create microscale devices. So we have a lot of acknowledgments and sponsors in our group. Does anyone have any questions?